the month of May is with us. Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks for joining us for our May Climate Watch update, brought to you by RuralWeather.co.nz. Let's get into it. El Nino. It has officially finished. It ended last month in April. Now I said this the other month that basically just because El Nino is ending, the weather pattern itself is a little bit harder to change. It's a little bit like trying to turn a cargo ship around in the Suez Canal. It can get stuck, and it might take a little bit of pushing around to get it moved. So what we've got at the moment that is continuing on with the El Nino weather pattern is this huge area of high pressure south of Australia. It is dominating New Zealand's weather as we kick off the 1st of May. But not only that, it is dominating our weather for the first week of May, if not longer than that. So it's a long, slow process. Now, despite the high pressure, which is stubborn and dominant, there are low pressure zones that are kind of forming around the subtropical area of New Zealand and also down here in the Southern Ocean towards Antarctica. Very normal. So we are kind of in a messy time of year where we've got lows now forming. But kind of the leftovers of the El Nino weather pattern, they are still here. So while the mainstream media obsess over La Nina, which is potentially on the cards later this year, uh, we are much more focused on what is happening actually at the moment and over the next few months ahead as we go away from El Nino and we move in towards a neutral weather pattern. So you're hearing the headlines because they are breathless um, with the mainstream outlets. They don't understand that this is just normal. It's like the sun rising in the east. You know, you don't write news stories every day about it. Um, and we swing from El Nino to La Nina all the time. It happens all the time. It's been happening for centuries. So if you look here, this is where we've been. We've been in El Nino for the past few months. This is November, December, January, February, March. So you can see as we've been going along, tracking down to where we are now, which is in this white zone in the middle. El Nino is up here, La Nina in the bottom part. And uh, this, by the way, is just the snapshot of where we're at, right smack bang in the middle, which is where we are. But we're still leaning, if you look at all the lines, we're still leaning more towards El Nino than anything else. So it is not surprising at all to weather forecasters in this part of the world that we're still seeing an El Nino weather pattern with those big highs south of Australia and lots of windy sort of west to southwest winds into the New Zealand area. Not necessarily stormy, but just that westerly flow is dominating. So as we track through the months ahead, it kind of plateaus out here. Some models are still picking El Nino. Some, more of them, are picking La Nina as we get towards the later part of spring. But this is still very much neutral territory, which means it's chaotic and variable. We've got more chances of um, low pressure zones and high pressure zones all being mixed together. So let's just take another look. These are all the different computer models from around the world. Australia at the top there. Uh, we've got France, uh, Japan, Europe, uh, UK, and America. Hope you followed all that. There's a test at the end. Uh, so at the moment, mostly in that neutral zone, but like I say, leaning still more onto that El Nino side of things. So that's why we're still seeing that El Nino weather pattern carrying on. Jump forward to July, and the graphic here, which is made by the Bureau of Meteorology, shows that uh, they're the only ones, the Australians are the only ones still leaning into the El Nino side, all of the other modeling shifting more towards La Nina. However, we're still, still in that neutral zone. So El Nino, La Nina, doesn't really matter at that point, we're still in the middle. And that means we'll be watching the tropics to see more low pressure forming up there on our side of the planet. And then we get through to September, the Bureau of Meteorology here out of Australia, they are smack bang in the middle saying we are neutral. We don't see it being La Nina yet. However, most of the other models are leaning that way. Only a couple of them though, or a few of them I should say, three of them there, are technically into La Nina. Also worth noting that of the three previous La Nina events, two of them brought drought to the North Island worse than the last El Nino. And all the headlines you see in the news, drought from El Nino, drought, drought. And then you see La Nina, it's all about rain and flood. That's what the mainstream media tend to do. But it doesn't work like that. Not in our part of the world, not in our location of the world, because we are located here. They measure El Nino up here off the top of the screen, and Antarctica is just here. So we are really sort of just on the edges of where you measure El Nino and La Nina, almost on the outer edges of it, to be honest with you. So big highs like this one 
can dwarf our country for a couple of weeks and that breaks the big global weather pattern that you might be reading in those mainstream news outlets that don't quite maybe understand it as well. So here we are on the 1st of May, taking a look at the air pressure zones. And so we kick off the 1st of May with that enormous block of high pressure that goes all the way up to about Darwin and all the way down to almost Antarctica. So that's a really big high, well into the 1040s in the middle there. And that high pushes out towards New Zealand, but we've got that low dropping down from the subtropics, another small area of low pressure just trying to form around the South Island. So we kick off the first of the month with kind of where we've been over the last few weeks, so no great changes. We get to the second part of the month, big blocks of high pressure still in this red box here, still covering a huge part of Australia, easterly flow for them. We also have potentially an easterly flow or a southeasterly flow, it all depends on this weak area of low pressure, kind of large, but it's weak, uh, to our north. And that could just put the squeeze on the winds here, making for a windier setup. By the way, this could still change a little bit. Any kind of low like this is always a little bit borderline. But the high pressure belt still links up over the South Island, and that keeps those storms in the Southern Ocean sort of further down away from us. And for now, it's sort of stopping storms from up here from forming as well. There's a lot of high pressure going into the tropics, except for this one area here where we do see some low pressure as we kick off the second week. Let's go to the third week. So we're in the middle of the month now. Now, we don't do computer modeling beyond this because it's not accurate enough. But what we do is we look at week three and say, well, this is all moving across during that week. And so you can sort of see what will be happening to the very end of the month. And what you're seeing here is still high pressure coming out of Australia. It's moved north a little bit. The centers of these high pressure belts have gone a little further north. That's what usually what they do as we go on towards the winter months. Come sort of weak areas of low pressure in the middle there might produce a few showers. Worth keeping an eye on this far out. They could be just completely squashed away. Or if the highs have enough of a gap between them, the low can, can deepen a little bit in between. But really, in a nutshell, what we're seeing is the El Nino high pressure zones are still dominating, but the neutral weather pattern we're in now gives us a few sort of more silver linings, if you like, for the chance of a couple of areas of low pressure, but I would still be expecting fairly dry weather to be kicking in. Let's have a look now at rainfall for the first week. This is the departure from normal. What it shows you is pretty dry around the country. We do have a little bit of rain further to the north here. We've got some showers and downpours forming around parts of New South Wales and up here the usual tropical stuff, although this time of the year that tends to dry up a wee bit. But really what you're seeing here is percentage of rainfall, most parts of New Zealand are in this sort of below normal rainfall, sort of getting 25 to 50% of normally what you'd be getting at this time of the year, and that is for the very first week of May. Let's have a look now at the first half of the month. We'll show a closer version of New Zealand in a moment, but here is the big picture. In the white boxes, basically very little to no rain. The black boxes are where we're seeing heavier rain. So there's a chance of some heavy stuff up here, very isolated though. That's from that trough that we just showed you that starts to form. So look, we might get some wet weather around here, but you just go further down, that blue there is only five millimeters for the next two weeks. So there's a fine line between 150 millimeters offshore and just five millimeters inland. It may clip uh, parts of East Cape and Gisborne, but generally speaking, not much wet weather here in the Tasman or to our north to move in towards us. So a closer view of the country shows that messy stuff from those lows that are offshore, and they could still come in further and break the forecast, but for now, they are expected to be offshore because the high over towards Tasmania keeps nudging that rain further away from us. But we might be seeing a little bit of helpful wet weather into places like Wider Upper, uh, some wet weather into Hawke's Bay where they do need it, and uh, a little bit of wet weather, we hope, up here in the eastern side of Northland. They could do with some wet weather as well, but not very much for Canterbury or Otago or Southland, although I don't think we'll get too many complaints from the further south that we go. Let's have a look at the marine heat waves, courtesy of the Moana Project, and we are seeing a little bit of warmer than average uh, marine conditions around the country right now, mostly or only around the North Island. The yellow is moderate, but we see a strong one here up towards the very beginning of 90 Mile Beach. And so in that area there, uh, we are expecting the sea to be a little bit warmer than it should be. When it's in a little bubble like that, not so much of a problem, but if this becomes more widespread, that is more of an issue um, for the marine life in particular. 
But if you're a swimmer, the positive is it's really good when it's warm, isn't it? So you always got to find the positives. And finally, we end on the soil moisture map. And、uh, look, this is looking still like El Nino. We have seen relief in parts of Marlborough. Worth noting that the the maps here made by the、uh, Niwa government agency,、um, the curved nature of it, how it's kind of smooth rounding, that's a sign of the computer modelling making up the gaps where they don't know that they don't have data for it. And so basically, it looks a little worse than it might be. But around Marlborough, there's been some good rain. Most of this stuff is up in the dry. You know the mountains where it's not quite so much of a problem. Some of the valleys in here still a bit dry though. Wider up are dry. Hawkes Bay, Gisborne dry, and the southern part of Taranaki, along with around parts of like Fangarei and also around Coromandel Peninsula, those areas are all a little bit dry. So that offshore rainmaker might produce a little bit of relief here and there, but you know no big silver bullet just yet to come in and fix the the dry conditions. So the reason why we are pushing back. Towards the mainstream news outlets, banging on about La Nina as if it's the biggest storm of the century about to come in, when it's just like the normal、um, swings of our weather、uh, and climate. The reason why we're talking about that is because we still are stuck in an El Nino weather pattern, despite El Nino officially, technically now being well and truly over. But we're into that neutral zone, and there isn't a lot of difference. So don't expect a major change just yet. But the silver lining. We're seeing more low pressure zones. We're seeing more cold fronts coming into the country, and that will gradually break away some of those dry areas. But we still do need a proper rain system to come through and cross the North Island to really change things. That is all from me. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for all the support on YouTube. We read all the comments, even if we can't reply to every one of you. But thank you so much for all the support we get there as well. We will see you again in one month from now.